Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. In this movie, we're going to be looking at active memory sharing, in particular how to set it up, and it's quite easy. Well, my demo system here is a Power 6. If we look inside, it's got four CPUs, 16 gigabytes of memory, and five disks. A fairly typical smallish setup. Connected to that, of course, is a hardware management console of a fairly recent version. And my laptop here is connected to the network so I can talk to the HMC or I can log on to particular logical partitions. Now I could connect my 520 to some SAN storage like a DS4700 via a switch. And we will do that in a later movie when we want to use partition mobility with AMS. But for this simple setup we're going to keep things simple and we're going to use internal SAS drives. I actually have uh, five disks in my machine and all of those are going to be owned by the virtual I.O. server as local disks. I set that up this way, so that the first disk is used for the root volume group for the V.I.O. server itself, so it boots up from that. Then for my client logical partitions, I've got another drive in a different volume group called client volume group and so in there is the logical volumes that become the virtual disks for my client logical partitions. The other three disks I put into a volume group called Paging VG and in those we're going to do the AMS paging. So I've created logical volumes in this volume group. Um, I've called the logical volumes AMS1, AMS2 onto AMS6. Now that's just my naming convention, they could be called anything you like. And each of these logical volumes I've made 32 gigabytes. Now that's actually larger than they need to be. Remember with AMS, the hypervisor via the VIO server will page out the logical memory of your logical partitions. Now of course the logical partition memory can't be bigger than the actual machine that you're in. So this machine only has 16 gigabytes of memory and so there's no need for the logical volumes to be 32 gigabytes. So in a 16 gigabyte machine we're probably never going to have a logical partition with more than at a stretch 15 gigabytes of logical memory and so we're never going to get to the 32 gigabytes. Also remember that for each logical partition that's using shared memory, it has one logical volume, one of these AMS logical volumes attached to it. So here's the uh, the DIMMs inside my machine. I've got four 4 gigabyte DIMMs. And the next thing to do is create this shared memory pool. Now in this case, I'm going to make a shared memory pool of four gigabytes. And I'm limiting that uh, deliberately uh, in real life I may make that a lot larger and I make most of my logical partitions use the shared memory pool. In this case I'm going to keep it fairly small because as I do some testing I want to deliberately stress the AMS. So if I keep the pool small and then oversubscribe the memory inside it then I'm going to force the AMS to actually do some paging and we can then monitor that. Remember when we create a shared memory pool we've also got to say if we run out of space in the pool, where do we put that? And so we have to also connect up the logical volumes on a VIO server or two VIO servers so that this is the logical volumes where the memory will be pushed if we run out of space in the pool. Then we're going to create a logical partition, a client one. As a reminder here that if we want to use the shared memory pool, it has to be a shared CPU logical partition and it has to be using virtual I.O. so it's using virtual disks and virtual networks maybe a virtual optical device as well. Apart from that we're just going to create this as a regular logical partition when it asks us how much memory we have a, now have a choice of dedicated or shared, we just say shared and we say how much we want. So we're going to add some more logical partitions in here here's four, five, six. When we come to the seventh logical partition in this setup we can create the partition but we can't start it. If you remember every logical partition that is using the shared memory pool has to have its own logical volume on the VIO server to back it up. 
In this case, we've only got six logical volumes. So the seventh logical partition can't actually start up because it hasn't got a logical volume for its paging space. If we wanted to start a seventh, we'd have to add more logical volumes to the VIO server and add those to the shared memory pool. Now, if we have an older Power6 machine that came out uh, before AMS was available, then we'd have to update the HMC to the required code to support AMS. The same with the firmware for the machine. Then we'd have to add the AMS activation key. Um, this comes with Enterprise Power VM. And then we have to upgrade the VIO server so that it supports AMS as well. If you're setting up a machine after AMS has come out, you may already be at these latest versions. We're now going to demonstrate the 5, 6, 7 and 8, where we're going to create the logical volumes on the VIO server. We're going to create the shared memory pool itself. Then we'll show you how to create a logical partition that will use the shared memory pool and start it up. OK, then here's my HMC. We're going to be using this uh, 520 called Silver, and these are the logical partitions on it that I have already. We have the VIO server here. It's uh, already running, and I have one logical partition running. First, though, let's check those prerequisites. If we go to Updates, and we can see here that I'm running HMC 734 Service Pack 2. Now, I am making this movie just before the uh, GA software, the General Availability software, so you may find that uh, you need to go to a slightly higher version than the one I'm running here. So this is uh, 734 Service Pack 2. The silver machine here is running firmware 340 IPL level 70. Again, that might be a little behind what actually gets released. The next thing we want to do is if we go back to our servers, let's select our silver machine and we'll check the activation code. We'll go to properties of the machine, click on capabilities, and here we have at the top active memory sharing capable. So this machine can do it. Now this was an older machine, so I had to get the activation code to enable this feature. New machines that are purchased with Enterprise Power VM will have this automatically enabled as delivered. The next thing to do is to make sure that we got the VIO server up to date. So let me switch to a telnet session. And we can see here that I've updated my VIO server to 2.1.1 and this has the features to support AMS. It's a small update to the 2.1 VIO server. I've created a few logical volumes in this paging volume group. So if we look at that, we'll see that there are three disks involved in that volume group. And I have five logical volumes in here of 32 gigabytes. And I've just called those AMS 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. They don't have to be called that. Also note that I didn't set the type. Now, by default, they tend to be JFS, but it's uh, it's a, the type is uh, really a comment to remind you what's in, in there. This certainly isn't a journal file system, but you could put something in there about AMS if you like to remind yourself what the pub what the purpose of this logical volume is actually for. I've created these logical volumes and I'm going to use these to support AMS running with a few logical partition clients. Again at the machine level, AMS is a whole machine function. We'll go up here in configuration, we'll fly down to virtual resources. Here's the shared process pool management, now we have shared memory pool management. And we've got a wizard here to help us set this up. There's a welcome, it's going to take us through the various stages to set this up. So let's put a maximum pool size of 12 gigabytes. This machine has 16 gigabytes of memory inside it. So that is the majority. And the actual pool size at the moment, I'm going to, going to make it uh, just 4. That's quite low because then I can, when I'm 
demonstrating performance monitoring, I can actually force it to actually do some paging to actually see it uh, in action. We'll go for next. To support that shared memory pool, we have to give it these logical volumes that we created on the VIO server. This machine only has one VIO server, and um, we could have another one. In this case, it's just this single logical partition. And it's asking us to select the particular devices we want. So we'll it'll actually give us a list here of um, what is currently available, which is none because we're doing the initial startup. If we were going to make adjustments, it'd have a list of what we actually currently got here. So we've got a device type. There are two types of device. Logical means it's a logical volume that it's connected to the VIO server, as we've just created. Physical means that it's a, a H disk, and we're going to give it the whole H disk. That is quite unusual because you don't really want to have one disk that is perhaps 300 gigabytes because it's unlikely that our logical partitions will have 300 gigabytes of memory and we want to page it all out onto one particular disk. Other alternative for physical disks is of course a LUN on a fiber channel disk subsystem and of course a LUN can be backed up by lots of disks and will get better performance that way and a LUN is mandatory if we want to do partition mobility. But we'll select all and then we'll do a refresh and you'll go and find what devices are available on the VIO servers. So here they all are on my VIOS and it's found the names of the devices, it's found the size and it's redundant capable false because these are not LUNs, these are just logical volumes. So let's select all these. So we've selected all five. This means I now can have five logical partitions using AMS. There's one file required for each logical partition. So if I tried to start a sixth, of course, we couldn't do that without adding more logical volumes in this case. OK, we'll take next. OK, we have a summary in here of everything we've set up, and we'll click Finish. And we're done. So now let's click on a particular logical partition and we'll convert it from dedicated memory to shared. Configuration, manage profiles. We only have one profile, so we'll select that. And we'll action and edit to change the profile. And go for memory. And now we have new mode up here because we have a shared memory pool we can change from dedicated to shared. If we don't have a memory pool set up, it just says it is dedicated and there is no option to go to shared. So let's click on shared. It'll update the panel for us. Now if this logical partition had physical adapters or if it had physical CPUs, you would not be allowed to do this. In fact, if you had physical adapters, they'll just be, they'll give you a warning, but it'll actually delete them for you. You need to have virtual Ethernet and virtual disks, perhaps a virtual DVD as well. We'll leave the settings as they were, 2 gigabytes. Everything is OK. We'll select the VAO server, there is only one in this case, that we want to do our paging on, and we'll click OK. And we'll close it. And then we can start it up. If I selected this one with, that is running, I'd have to change the profile and then I'd have to hard stop, stop it completely, and then start it up so it picks up the new shared memory. Operations active. We'll start a console and we'll start it up. Here we have AX starting up. In a minute, we'll get to the uh, prompt. One point to note is that you can create a new logical partition and do the install into it using AMS. You don't have to start off dedicated or anything like that. Now, if we wanted to find out if we're in AMS mode, if we do VM stat, there's probably other commands as well, but you see memory mode shared up here. 
and the size of the AMS pool is 4 gigabytes. If we do VM stat minus H, here we see the PMEM column here is, is 2 gigabytes. So we're actually using 2 gigabytes of real memory and we're loaning to the uh, hypervisor none. Well, this is the only logical partition using the MS pool at the moment, so fair enough. If we carried on adding extra logical partitions so that we actually used more than the 4 gigabytes in the pool, then some of them would have to be loaning memory so that others could actually run. Well, that finishes our movie on active memory sharing and how to set it up. It's actually a lot quicker than we've done in this movie once you know the details of what's going on and what to expect. I hope that's been useful. Don't forget to check out the other AMS movies.